Hey folks, and thanks for joining me. I'm back on the Crosley 718B, and uh, you can see here that the uh, volume control is a uh, tapped volume control. That was done back in the early 30s when they started uh, developing the high fidelity for uh, receivers. And uh, they were referred to back in the day as loudness taps or tone compensation. In my design here, or in the Crosley design, it appears uh, that it goes through a resistor and a capacitor. And uh, that particular filter network is uh, acting more as tone compensation. You can see here, looking at the uh, schematic itself in the parts list, the uh, particular value is not called out, which is uh, problematic, but uh, there's some other resources that we can use to uh, gather the uh, value itself. In reviewing the schematic here, you can see I'm highlighting your uh, typical potentiometer, or the potentiometer that's installed here. And uh, you can see the top side is your high side, the bottom side is your low side, and then off to the left side it goes down to resistor 30 and capacitor number 19 that I'm highlighting here is the uh, tone compensation uh, circuit that's been put in place. So uh, again, that's what we're going to try to uh, build using a, a modern day potentiometer. You can see looking at the schematic, it doesn't look like it's tapped at 50-50. Uh, it looks like it's on the lower side. So uh, let's look at another resource here, that being the um, SAMS Red Book, and uh, see if I can pick out the uh, value that was uh, actually installed in the radio back in the day. You can see the uh, tap location here. Again, we're looking at this from the uh, rear side. So this will be our high side, our wiper, and our uh, low side or ground side. So let's uh, double check. This thing I think read just under 3 meg before. And you can see that's where we're uh, residing today, about 2.7 meg. So uh, leaving the uh, connection here on the uh, ground side, if you go back and look at the uh, schematic that I shared, let's see what we've got back here to the tap location. And you can see I'm about 1.1 meg, so it's about... Uh, what, 40% or so? Okay, let's try to use this audio uh, taper here. It's a uh, 1 meg alpha taper with a uh, switch. We'll open it up here and see what it's going to take here to uh, tap in and see if we can get uh, somewhat close to the uh, 250k for a uh, tap point here. Let me go ahead and continue offline here just to uh, pop the uh, little ears back here, the uh, four different points, and then uh, we'll open this up here. And just one thing to note here, I've got the uh, switch in the off position. And there you can see the uh, switch mechanism. And uh, here's our uh, audio taper. And you can see the uh, wiper position here, making uh, contact with the uh, carbon track, or what I believe to be carbon right in this area, the uh, resistive track. Let's uh, grab the meter now and uh, just do some testing here from the uh, low side of the uh, potentiometer back to the track. And uh, let's just see where our uh, 250,000 ohm point resides. Okay, you can see I've got the uh, low side of the uh, potentiometer hooked up here. I'm going to attach my uh, meter here gently to the uh, strip. And you can see there about halfway. I'm about 130,000 or so. Again, if this was a linear taper, I would expect the... DC resistance to be half of the uh, 1 meg at that point. So this thing will quickly change to uh, 1 meg. Let's see if we can get back in this area and check. 165, 179, and you can see how quickly the uh, DC resistance is changing. 351 at that point. 
me see if I can get more of an exact location here where the uh, 250,000 resides. You can see how quick it changes. So it looks like if I aim for the center of this uh, cutout area and try to tap in somewhere right in here, I'll be in the ballpark. I may be under, I may be over when I'm done. You can see how quickly that ramps up. So we'll shoot for about uh, halfway or back this way just a bit. Alright, let me take a look at the uh, pot itself here. Alright, since I'm going to uh, run a conductive strip around the outer side of the uh, material here, right from here back to this point, drill a couple small holes see if we can get a lead out and uh, tie this back in. I'm going to uh, cut the uh, can here down just like this side is cut so I don't make contact with the uh, outer uh, can itself here. So uh, let me just get my uh, wire or cutters here and uh, just cut from this point back down to about right here I believe. Just double checking myself here to make sure I cut this correctly because I'm looking at this uh, of course upside down so I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, pen and mark everything just to make sure that I'm uh, spot on here. Alright, let me uh, clean these edges up here and get a small file here. Make sure that this is what we're looking for. I've got those uh, bent back where you can see and removed. So uh, let me go ahead and do some filing here. Let me get my uh, miniature drill set out and uh, go ahead and drill me a couple holes right in this area and I'll try to show that along the way. That's where I'm going to just run a lead through to uh, solder back to and use the conductive adhesive as well to connect from the uh, lead back to the uh, track back in this point. Alright, you can see I've got my uh, hand drill set here and what I'm going to do is try to poke a couple holes through here or drill a few I should say right in this area and uh, separate them by maybe two or three millimeters apart where I can just loop a uh, lead of wire through and attach that with the uh, conductive material back over to here. Let me go back over to the uh, vise here and just uh, drill these holes real quick. Alright, not sure if that's going to show up on camera or not, but uh, you can see I've drilled the uh, two holes maybe a little tighter or closer to the uh, carbon track than I wanted. But uh, hopefully I can uh, make this work. And you can see I'm going to uh, use a old uh, capacitor here and try to use the lead on it and uh, form my uh, conductor here to uh, solder back to. You can see I've still got some clearance here from my uh, lead coming through back to the uh, strip. I'm going to do just a little more sanding right in this area. And then uh, just take my uh, soldering iron and go ahead and solder these two connection points here together. Clip this off for me a nice uh, loop here to be used as my uh, center tap location. Or I should say tap location, not uh, center. Alright, let me uh, just clean up my uh, solder locations here with a little alcohol. And a uh, quick test now just to make sure I didn't uh, create a problem here and get too close to the uh, track. Let's make sure we're still open here, and we are. 
And you see we've got continuity here. Let me uh, mix up the epoxy now. And uh, go ahead and try to lay this down and uh, see if we can get close to our uh, 250K uh, that we're shooting for. Plus or minus, maybe 20%. Okay, you guys can see what I want to be used, and I wanted to use an epoxy versus my other uh, silver uh, conductive material, uh, just because if someone sprays up in here with a uh, cleaner to uh, clean out the uh, volume control in the future, I was concerned that that uh, material may uh, just kind of disappear with the solvents. So um, I want to give this a try. Uh, first time using the uh, silver conductive epoxy, so we'll see how it works out over time. Again, this has to uh, cure, so we don't even have close to uh, full conductivity at this point in time. But you can see I'm just under uh, 200,000, so I'm a little maybe fat on this side. I'm going to try to take something and see if I can get just a little of the epoxy off. Right, on, right in this area here closest to me, and uh, where it makes contact with the uh, carbon strip there and uh, see if I can increase the uh, DC resistance uh, just a bit. And if not, uh, this will be, uh, you know, better than uh, not using a uh, tapped resistor or potentiometer for sure. Let me uh, just see if I can tweak this a little bit offline here. Let me let this uh, cure. I'm going to grab the uh, heat lamp and uh, We'll come back and do some additional uh, testing. Here. Here's that little uh, miniature drill set <clears throat> that I used. And, uh, it's made by Mutter. And a nice assortment of uh, miniature drill bits and stuff that come in handy. Again, just a small little uh, hand drill. This is where I ended up at. You can see I'm about uh, 209K. So I was shooting for uh, 250, but uh, that's as close as I could get. And uh, that's uh, still, what, within just under 20%. So I think that's going to be just fine. Let me uh, hook up the analog meter here. And uh, we'll run through the uh, rotation. It is your typical volume potentiometer or volume control. And then uh, we'll check the uh, center tap as well. From the uh, wiper back, and you guys can see the uh, motion as I uh, rotate through the uh, range. Just ensuring here the switch itself is functional. All right, let's hook it up now and just make sure that we're good. I'm going from the low side to the high side, and you can see I'm reading right at uh, one meg, which we should have. Let me switch this one lead here back to the uh, wiper, and now we'll check the rotation of the pot just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And it's tracking the way it should. Let me reverse the leads. Run it back through the rotation this way. Alright, that's tracking well. Let me leave the uh, one lead here on the wiper itself. And we'll go back to our tap location now. And run this through the rotation. And that appears to be doing exactly what it should. Should bottom out here right at uh, 200,000 ohms or so. Let me uh, grab the digital meter and see where I ended up at. I think I was uh, just north of uh, 200K. So I'm just a little off, but uh, still probably within uh, our 20% range there or close to it. 
All right, looks like I ended up here. You can see just under uh, 200k, but uh, still not bad. I was uh, shooting for 250, but again, this being a audio taper, it uh, really drops off uh, quick. So um, anyway, I think this will be uh, satisfactory for the uh, radio restoration. So to be interesting, once we get the uh, Crosley radio up and working with the uh, new tapped volume control in place. I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Take care.